Want to make movies? Hey there, aspiring filmmakers. You're the new Hollywood generation. My name is Orlando Dilbert. This is Hollywood Unapologetic. I first wrote about success in filmmaking and life when I was writing Pollyanna's Tear Soap, Battlefields of Hollywood, a survival guide against the cynicism and the hypocritical. Today I wanted to speak about filmmaking essentials, coronavirus misinformation, and the new Hollywood generation. For you, the new Hollywood generation, this directly applies to you. If you haven't watched the episode Filmmaking Essentials Reopening Hollywood, I'll have a link at the end of this episode for you to check out. While I was writing the initial episode on Reopening Hollywood, I decided it would be best to produce several episodes on a topic. While the biggest concern is how can we keep our families and ourselves and one another safe going back to production, finding reliable information can be a challenge. Well, for many of us anyway. Shortly after I wrote this episode, I hopped on a filmmaking group I joined just a few days ago with the hopes of sharing some helpful information. This morning, someone asked a question about returning to production and added some things one should be mindful of. A couple of us responded with positive and constructive information and what we should expect on set. <laughs> then, after this one guy was saying he was just hired on an independent production, he adds, That's not true! Yo, indie be indie, yo! Um, yeah. Indie be indie, indeed. But anyone who wants to be responsible to his crew, and his family for that matter, needs to be smarter and accept accountability, and hopefully be a better example for people like this guy. Right off the bat, you should check with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention regularly. This should be your first source of information, not anyone else regarding your well-being. Keep yourself informed with their updated information online. However, there is so much volume of information that is misleading. There are tons of contradictory and just flat out wrong information bits floating around. Some of this has to do with today's political climate. So much so, federal, state, and local officials themselves are having difficulty getting reliable information, which is part of the reason why information gets distorted before it even gets to the populace. This is dangerous because inaccurate information during a global health crisis can be deadly on a global scale. This same misleading information can be found in an overabundance. One type is misinformation, which is inaccurate information that wasn't purposely meant to be misleading. Then there's disinformation intended to deceive and often is an organized effort. I mention this because in today's very polarized political climate, it is easy to find information that's consistent with one's system of belief. A political figure labeling information fake news that is coming from medical researchers and first responders to exasperate the emotions of the people is irresponsible and dangerous. Yet, this is what we hear every day. This just fuels separation within the populace at a time we need one another more, and it makes it harder to find trustworthy sources of information. Then come the rumor mongers. They use social media platforms to run with often ridiculous claims in an effort to maximize user engagement. While people buy into what's being shared, evidence-based information becomes conspiracy theories to build revenue for themselves or their shareholders. People then mistake opinion-based television programming as actual news news reporting as reliable guidance. This has also been an effort to build political partisanship and narrow-mindedness, which only builds distrust towards anyone different than they are. While at the beginning of the discussions and reporting about the coronavirus were filled with some uncertainty about the outbreak itself from the scientific community, this helped create a vacuum. People were looking for reliable information information on the virus's transmissibility and fatality rate. This in turn allows some superficially reputable sources without real expertise to help build undistinguishable reliable news. Then come the highly organized misinformation campaigns from Russia and China attacking demographic governments with messages to not trust the healthcare systems of these same nations. President Donald Trump and his administration referring to the Chinese or Wuhan coronavirus hasn't helped. And the lack of evidence by Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that the virus originated in a Chinese laboratory is yet one more misinformation narrative. These series of events are only helping online communities of extremist groups build a stronger voice. The anonymous nature of the internet has allowed them to use unregulated online platforms as well as mainstream ones such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to spread conspiracy theories to boost their agendas. They have gone so far as to blame immigrants and Jews for spreading the virus and even spreading this as a form of population control by the deep state. All of this takes advantage of those who are fearful of the unknown. 
The misinformation is used as a tool to engage with mainstream audiences around the common topic of interest, and then they can be pointed in the direction of more hateful views all around the coronavirus pandemic. There is so much more information I could have gotten into, and fortunately for us, there is data available to track and analyze the information that is flowing around, and there is a lot of it that is flat out wrong. So where do we get reliable information? Well, not social media sites or any one television show or network that leans way one way or another, or any source that promotes conspiracy theories or messages of hate. As I've already mentioned, the CDC should be your first source of information. And getting back to production, you should keep informed and ask your producers questions. When can I come back to work? What safety protocols will be in place? Will there be daily swab or rapid antigen testing? Will there be insurance coverage if I contract COVID-19? Will I have to wear a mask and gloves on the set? Will there be hand sanitizer in my department? Please take the time to ask these questions and be ready to accept the answers whether you're comfortable with them or not. Please watch my other episodes in Reopening Hollywood series where I speak about the answers to these questions and a lot more you should know. Bottom line, anyone working as part of any film crew hacks to accept is a very tightly run unit. As I mentioned in the last episode, we as members of the new Hollywood generation are all in it together. We're all in close proximity of one another. And under normal circumstance, sometimes our lives are at risk while on the clock. Today, the risk is higher. And this way of working and living may be with us for months or even years to come. Be safe. Be smart. Take it all one day at a time. And don't forget to be great. I'm going to add a link at the very end of the episode. Filmmaking Essentials. Reopening Hollywood. If you haven't checked it out. I think you'll dig it. Are you ready for the challenge?